60 Minutes Rewind. Alexei Navalny is the leader of the opposition in Russia who has survived an assassination attempt by poisoning. He's one in a long list of Vladimir Putin's critics who have been victims of unsolved shootings, suspicious suicides, and poisonings. We first met Alexei Navalny three years ago when he was running for president against Putin. Now Navalny is recuperating in Berlin, where we went this past week after Germany granted us special permission to travel there despite COVID restrictions. When we sat down with Navalny, he told us he was on an airplane on August 20th when he began to feel strange and then very, very sick. I said to the flight attendant and I kind of shocked him with my statement, uh, well, I was poisoned and I'm gonna die. And I immediately lay down uh, under his feet. Alexei Navalny was on a flight to Moscow from Siberia, where he'd been campaigning against Putin's party in a local election when he collapsed with no pain, but knowing he was dying. Actually, every cell of your body just uh, telling you that's body, we are that's done. Over. One of the other passengers turned on his phone and captured Navalny moaning in anguish. The pilot made an emergency landing in Omsk, where medics, thinking Navalny must be a drug addict, administered the usual treatment for an overdose and rushed him to a local hospital, where they said he wasn't poisoned, but wouldn't let him leave for days. Well, it was a big fight, and they thought that after 48 hours, these, uh, these poison would be untraceable. And uh, they just keep me there until this 48 hours will be gone. Navalny is under constant surveillance. His wife, Yulia, says government agents were at the hospital controlling access to her husband, and she believes calling the shots. At the time, Navalny was in a coma, unaware that his wife, Yulia, was waging a public campaign to encourage Western diplomatic pressure and... Did you write a letter to Putin? Yeah, I did it. Dear Mr. Putin, free my husband. I wrote, like, I insist that he should do it. <laughs> I demand you free my husband. Yeah. It was an uh, online campaign, let him out, and Putin thought it would be safe for him uh, just let me out after the, uh, 48 hours. So, after 48 hours, the Russian government allowed him to be flown by air ambulance to a hospital in Berlin known for its experience with victims of poison attacks. And I gather they suspected poison right away? Uh, yes, of course. Meanwhile, his team in Siberia searched his hotel room, collecting things Navalny may have touched, like this water bottle which the doctors in Berlin sent along with a blood sample to a German military lab to see exactly what the poison was. And the answer was Novichok. They discovered Novichok, this nerve agent, uh, in my blood, in, inside of body, on my body, and all this bottle from the hotel. So uh, that's why we now we know that I was poisoned in the hotel, because I, uh, well, it's, uh, again, it's just a pure speculation because no one knows what, what, what happened exactly. But I think that when I was uh, maybe put some clothes with this, um, with this poison on me, I touch it with the hand and then I sip from the bottle. So this nerve agent was not inside of a bottle, but on the bottle. Novichok is a highly toxic nerve agent said to be 10 times more potent than sarin gas. Labs in France and Sweden corroborated the finding. There's no doubt it was military-grade Novichok. It's maybe it's the most toxic uh, agent invented by the uh, humans. So it's a new type of Novichok, which prove that, unfortunately, Putin have a developing new program of this chemical weapon, which is forbidden. The Russians have said that they destroyed all these chemical weapons. Uh, that's why, actually, they deny everything, because it means that they still have this Novichok. So it means uh, they're not just violating with the keeping it. They uh, uh, continue to improve it. So, and there's uh, no doubt that Russia is the only place that where that could have come from. This is absolutely correct. It's a banned substance. It's a banned yes. substance. I think for Putin, uh, why he's using this chemical weapon 
to do, do both, kill me and, you know, terrify others. It's something really scary with the people just drop dead without, there are no gun, there are no shots, and in a couple of hours you will be dead and without any traces on your body. It's something terrifying and Putin is enjoying it. You have said you think that Mr. Putin's responsible. I don't think I'm sure that he's responsible. Putin's spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, says the charge is completely baseless and unacceptable. But Angela Merkel of Germany and Emmanuel Macron of France have persuaded the European Union to impose sanctions over this. Well, all these leaders have signed on except Donald Trump. Yes, I, I have noticed it. <laughs> is it important to you that he condemn this action? So um, I think it's extremely important uh, that everyone, of course, including and maybe in the first row president of the United States, to be very against using chemical weapon in the 21st century. But why would Putin want to poison Alexei Navalny? When we first met Navalny three years ago, he was running against Putin for president. He had made a name for himself by getting his hands on incriminating internal financial documents related to high-level officials and posting them on a blog. Did these documents that you got prove corruption? Uh, absolutely. I work as a whistleblower, and I'm not afraid to uh, announce the names. He says he found that the Kremlin's inner circle was accumulating vast amounts of wealth and published pictures of multiple homes and yachts. He moved on to airing documentaries on YouTube with video of the officials' lavish lifestyle. And uh, it's, uh, it's something very special about Mr. Putin, that he's crazy about money, personal money, about his family being rich, his friends, like all his uh, people who was served he, with him with the, uh, in the KGB, all of them, they are billionaires. That's why fighting corruption means for him that he's fighting me. You know, I'm smiling because here you are. You have survived the most potent nerve agent there is, and you are as fiery and worked up about, your, about Putin and what's going on in this country as you were when I met you a couple of years ago. Well, I'm... Glad. <laughs> I'm glad that I survived and... Uh... His blog inflamed so much outrage in 2017 that tens of thousands of Russians took to the streets against Putin. When Navalny called for a second round of protests three months later, he was arrested before he even left his apartment building. He's been jailed so many times he's lost count. He's been beaten, had green dye with acid splashed in his face, and now he can add poisoning to his resume and blame sure President Putin. Well, how can you say that? Why wouldn't it be one of the oligarchs whom you've embarrassed by, as you say, exposing their corruption? Even for an oligarch, it's impossible to get this Novichok. It's not something you can buy in the store, even if you have a millions of the billions of dollars. Maybe more important, you cannot use it. You will kill yourself and everyone around. Uh, because it's very difficult to, you know, apply Contain it. it. Yes. yes. Yeah. And uh, then this huge cover-up operation, there is no criminal investigation so far. If, if Putin is not responsible, why there is no investigation? And uh, look what they're doing right now. Like uh, Putin with a conversation with the French President Macron, mm -hmm. he said, well, Navalny poisoned himself. Seriously. Mr. Putin told the president of France that you poisoned yourself? Yes, it was just to, you know, annoy him. <laughs> the story will continue after this. Putin is contending with rounds of protests in the far eastern part of the country, with people taking to the streets for the past three months. Navalny thinks the attempt on his life is connected. Despite his controlling police, judges, courts, media, and everything, still he's uh, like, uh, he understands that he's surrounded by protests, and it's increasing. So that's why his, uh, they decided to, you know, ex for extreme measures. This is what he looked like just a month ago, soon after his doctors brought him out of an induced coma. Rail thin, with a sickly pallor. 
This photo was taken the first day he saw his children after being taken off a ventilator. So you were in a coma, and then you woke up. And what happened? After this coma, I just jumped to the long period of kind of crazy hallucinations and several, you know, steps of uh, realizing where I am, who I am, and uh, I could not speak and I could not write. How has this affected your family? <laughs> well, it was, a, it was a difficult situation, but they stand it and uh, Including did great. your children? Including your, children. Your son is 12 and your daughter is in college. Right. Those are tough ages to realize that your father well, came close they, to being assassinated. Did they say to you, Pop, Dad, you have to stop? Absolutely not. No, um, absolutely not. My, I, I'm very lucky man because I have all support from my family. You'd almost have to at this point. Yeah. Navalny, his wife, his bodyguard, and I went out for a walk in front of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin, and a phalanx of police showed up. So you, you certainly travel with a lot of protection. Yes, I have a lot of security. But... He's under the protection of the German government because there's concern he could be the target of another poisoning. And yet, he said he's determined to return to Moscow in a couple of months, as soon as he's 100% and resume his work where he left off, campaigning against Vladimir Putin. You know, you used to be known as the man who had no fear. But what about your family? Do you ever think uh, that you are putting them in danger? That is the toughest part, yes. I don't feel any fear, but children. What is kind of really horrible thought if they will try to use this Novichok somewhere around my apartment, mm -hmm. where my mm -hmm. children is coming, like, wow. you know, this door or something, where everyone can touch it. But anyway, we should fight these people because they will never stop. They will poison someone else. They will poison more people. Well, how do you feel now? Are you back, totally back? You seem to be. I still need some time to recover, and I'm working on it. But you do go to rehab. Do you go every day? Yes. To learn from the scratch how to, how to move, how to do some things. They're interesting that um, I feel kind of a bit a wooden or a tin man, like from the Wizard of Oz, because the body lost all flexibility at all. Interesting how it's work. I have no idea. It's, now it's uh, uh, difficult movies for me, for, for example, pick something from the ground. What about the psychological effect of having, knowing that somebody tried to kill you, came uh, that close? You know, uh, I think it's a, it's a good thing. It's very useful for politician maybe facing that once because it's changed you a bit. So maybe, ironically, I became kind of more human after this facing death.